Now, I know you're a medical oncologist, you work, but you work in a multidisciplinary setting, I'm sure with surgeons, Correct. with dermatologists. Uh, are most of these, uh, like basal cell cancer, again, very common cancer, normally they can get the most surgery, you know, with dermatologists and they get taken out and they're good and they, and they go along their way. So uh, what percentage of these cases, you know, amongst cutaneous squamous cell cancer of these three million do really present with advanced where they actually come and see a medical oncologist? That's, um, that's a great question. And in some ways it's a little hard to answer that question because, because of the frequency of both of these diseases, squamous cell as well as basal cell, there is no reporting required to National Registry. So for example, the SEER database, the um, surveillance epidemiology and end result database does not require reporting of these particular type of tumors there. So a lot of the data that we derive, particularly for identifying the development, incidence and prevalence of this disease is primarily from claims database, the medical claims database or the Medicare databases as well. I mean, the vast majority of these patients, more than 95% of them, are localized disease. And thankfully, the vast majority can be cured with simple surgery and a variety of additional modalities. It's the 3 to 5% of them that can metastasize both to nodal um, basins, you know, regional as well as distant, okay. as well as to distant metastatic sites, most commonly uh, the lung, the liver, and the bone. Okay, so they can... So the ones that you see <clears throat> are essentially the ones where metastatic disease. Tell me when it in your clinic. So uh, I'm sure you personally see uh, quite a few cases yes, because you're a tertiary mm -hmm. care center. So you personally see quite a few cases. Yes. Uh, so tell me what is the main presentation of these patients who come? Do they have like a disfiguring lesion on their face when they come, or do they just come? You know, they they've had an old surgery and it's been taken off, and on scans they've been they've now had metastatic disease. What is the normal clinical presentation of a patient with uh, metastatic or advanced, sure. uh, uh, it's, you know, It's CSC. actually all of the above. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the vast majority of them, at least the ones that come to medical oncology as a direct referral, or within our center, we function in a true multidisciplinary setting with surgical oncology, with dermatology, radiation oncology, which plays a very important role in this disease, and certainly us as the medical oncologists, we tend to get referrals of patients who have had progressive growth of their cutaneous squamous cell, um, regardless of the location. It could be the most common locations tend to be the head and neck area, the face area, particularly the sun-exposed regions. Um, in addition, we see them at sites of uh, chronic ulceration, chronic mm -hmm. trauma, fistula formation, and cutaneous squamous cell developing within that as well. So these are the typical presentations where they've now grown beyond where the dermatologist can actually help them take care of it surgically. Okay. Um, we also get a large number of patients who present to us with nodal palpable nodal metastatic disease. And obviously biopsy demonstrates squamous cell. The first thing that we land up asking them is, did you have a cutaneous squamous cell at some point in that regional area? Right. Um, the true incidence of distant metastatic disease is still being defined, particularly at presentation. There was a very recent publication in uh, JAMA Dermatology, in fact, right off, hot off the press in November 2018, which tried to identify this through um, a registry in England, where they've actually now mandated um, supplying pathology reports for cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma to this registry. So what they went back and looked at was the reports from 2013 to 2015, and essentially they had a large number of cases, as one would expect, um, of cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma, mm -hmm. but the true incidence of development of metastatic disease was roughly about 2% in those patients. Um, lower for women, slightly higher for men, about 2.4% in men. Okay, so uh, normally, so when you see these patients, uh, normally when they come to your clinic with uh, metastatic cutaneous cell carcinoma, tell me a little bit about, you said something about different, uh, so they've undergone their surgical options and they don't have any more surgical options, but then they see you as a multidisciplinary. Now tell me, in your practice, how many uh, of these patients are immune suppressed that you talked about, solid tumor uh, transplant, and after how long do they develop cutaneous uh, cell carcinoma? In our practice itself, um, I think because we at our cancer center, we are not a solid tumor transplant center, we have a separate solid tumor transplant center in the city itself, so they have their own cutaneous screening program there. So a lot of the patients that come to our clinic, at least at Moffitt, are the non-transplant patients. We do have a smattering of those that are associated with transplant. We see them more commonly with other immunosuppress uh, immunosuppressive illnesses, such as chronic lymphocytic uh, leukemia. But if, when you specifically look at the transplant literature, the patients who undergo solid tumor transplant, so this could be kidney, liver, heart, lung, 
Not Those, like a stem cell transplant that you talk about, not like heme transplant, leukemia this, this or ALL or AML. Transplant. This is a solid tumor transplant. Correct. Got it. These have an exquisitely high incidence of development of cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. And the, um, the belief is that, number one, they use immunosuppressive drugs in high doses that potentially can alter the immune surveillance of the body itself, and therefore precancerous lesions may actually then go on to developing cancerous lesions. Because the immune system lesions. cannot grab them and exactly. like, take care of them. Exactly. Um, the incidence is very high, um, it can range as much as up to, on an average, 100 times that one would see in the general population. Much higher for cardiac and lung transplants, a little bit lower for um, kidney transplants. And uh, these transplant patients, particularly in studies that have been done in heart transplant patients, at least a third of them will develop cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma in the first 10 years after their transplant. So it is an extraordinary problem and disease burden in these recipients. Tell me about, you said in the beginning, so one is the risk is a solid transplant, but the other thing is just the light, ex areas exposed to light. So how does that work? How does this light cause ultraviolet light, I'm guessing? How does it lead to the uh, you know, pathogenesis of this cancer? Um, so this is um, primarily a sunlight or ultraviolet light B related cancer. Uh, primarily for CSCC, it is cumulative exposure over time. So it's certainly seen in higher, in higher incidence in individuals with occupational exposure over a long period of time. For example, individuals who are working outside for farmers or construction workers who have not taken adequate sun protection. And if, if you sort of dial back the clock, you know, two decades or three decades ago, so the generation above us, see, they really did not use sunscreen or other sun protective measures. And, you know, we probably didn't know as well back then. Now I think we are much smarter, and so hopefully that incidence will decrease. You know, time will tell us if that indeed becomes the case. But ultraviolet B essentially causes DNA damage in the keratinocytes of the skin. Um, in individuals who are predisposed to that, um, can the, the cells typically will not undergo apoptosis. That means they won't die. Essentially. They will yes. not die, exactly. Um, and continue to grow and multiply, so develop precancerous lesions, the most common being actinic keratosis and untreated, that actinic keratosis eventually goes on to developing cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma. What um, ultraviolet light does primarily is produce multiple hits to these cells over a period of time. So there's repeated DNA damage that occurs to these cells and therefore it is cumulative over time. With diseases such as basal cell and melanoma, it tends to be the more intense damage that is associated, for example, with sunburns. Okay. Um, so with uh, cutaneous CSCC, it tends to be over a long period over a long, of time So more now. chronic than more acute, more exactly. higher, like.